At the end of the 60s, the MPAA brought in the rating system. With the Vietnam War in full effect and foreign films showing more skin, the Hays Code had broken. The film industry was going under, and this ushered in a whole new form of filmmaking. No more restrictions. Show what you want. And that's what young filmmakers did throughout the 70s. Blood and boobs, baby. Exploitation and sex. This was injected into film noir as well with the neo-noir, now in bright colors. And the best of those is Roman Polanski's Chinatown. To all you out of work soda jerks without a penny to pinch, to the detectives with all the answers, to the dastardly dames who play men like baby dolls, and the trusted ones too pure for this world, and all you double-crossing, backstabbing, ruthless, baby-faced amateurs, this one's for you. So suit up, turn out the lights, put the match to your smokes, and sit back for the darker side of things. Cine Shadow Moonlights, Noir Vimbo. The film opens like a movie from the 40s, an Academy Ratio. Jake Giddies, played by old Jack Nicholson, is a P.I. who catches wives screwing around on their husbands. One of his clients is Burt Young. You know him, Paulie from Rocky. We see him flipping through dirty pictures of his wife getting nailed. This tells us we're watching a film from the 70s. Okay, instead of the plot getting in the way of the story, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what happens. Jake tails a Mr. Mulray after fake Mrs. Mulray has concerns of him cheating. He's chief engineer of water and power and is caught with a girl. After this is posted in the paper, the real Mrs. Mulray, played by Faye Dunaway, threatens suit. I don't get tough with anyone, Mr. Giddies. My lawyer does. Mr. Mulray is murdered and fished out looking just like a dummy from an Italian horror film. Jake is threatened and cut. We find out Mrs. Mulray's father, Noah Cross, played by John Houston, and Mr. Mulray were business partners. The water department and Noah Cross have been drying up orange groves and buying the land under clueless retirees' names for cheap in hopes of a future reservoir wetting them again for mass profit. Woo, baby! Now I'll just talk about my favorite parts. One thing I love about this movie is Jack Nicholson's dialogue throughout. At one point, he runs into former sheriff turned P.I. and greets him. Mulvaney, what are you doing here? They turned my water off. What's it to you? How'd you find out about it? You don't drink it. You don't take a bath in it. Ah, they wrote you a letter. But then you'd have to be able to read. <laughs> and when he greets his old pal Lou... Still putting Chinamen in jail for spitting in the laundry? And when cornered and asked about the cut on his nose, your wife got excited. She crossed her legs a little too quick. There are some great scenes as well, like a nighttime scene when Jake jumps a fence, is startled by what we think is a gunshot, and is caught in the rushing water, slammed up against another fence. Jake is then cornered and held at knife point. You know what happens to nosy people. Gets his nose sliced open and has to wear a bandage the rest of the movie. There's a great chase scene when Jake investigates an orange grove. He is shot at and speeds through a row of oranges before being headed off by a man on horseback. He goes backwards, gets his radiator blown out, tires shot out, and slams into a tree. When investigating the Albacore Club, Jake is rushed by the two men who had cut him previously. He roughs him up and kicks away the gun as Evelyn swoops in with the car. Jake grabs his hat and jumps on while being shot at. Now to the most effed up part about the movie, the big reveal towards the end. Jake tails Evelyn and sees through the window that she has a girl under sedation. When questioned, Evelyn says that she's her daughter. Jake doesn't believe her. He slaps her. She's my sister, Evelyn says. He slaps her again. 
Finally, she states it. She's my sister and my daughter. Apparently, Noah Cross raped her when she was 15. Wow, dude. This movie just made John Huston the father of film noir, an incestual rapist. What a sick f- In conclusion, this film is a fun ride, especially with Nicholson behind the wheel. It's easy to see why Tim Burton selected him to play Jack Napier in Batman. He looks damn good in that suit. The ending is devastating, though, so be prepared. But what can you do? Forget it, Jake. It's Chinatown. Happy Thanksgiving to all you crazy kids out there. Keep your belt loose and try not to eat too much. And as always, be thankful. You've got a lot more than you really need. Especially me in your house talking to you now.